San Diegans accomplish great things every day. We care about our neighbors and our community. We are proud of our diversity. We are resilient. We hold our leaders accountable. We live in one of the most dynamic cities in America. The San Diego Union Tribune, telling San Diego's story for more than 150 years. When your doctor recommends starting your day with fiber, we're going to assume they're talking about internet. Alexis, turn on the lamp. Okay, let there be light. Actually, it's a little warm in here. Can you turn on the AC? You got it. Motion has been detected at your front door. Uh, I bet that's my package. It's, uh, arrived. No matter how much stuff you have, it all works better on Ting Internet. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Senye, chef and founder of Just a Taste and author of the brand new The Secret Ingredient Cookbook. Welcome to the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. I am coming to you from my home kitchen here in San Diego, California, and I am so excited to be making one of my absolute all-time favorite recipes from the book because I am a pasta girl through and through. So we are gonna be making my sweet and spicy penne arrabbiata from the pastas chapter of the secret ingredient cookbook. So my cookbook here is filled with 125 family friendly recipes with surprisingly tasty twists. So every recipe in the book has some surprising addition that takes it from kind of ordinary to absolutely extraordinary. There are tried and true favorites like the mac and cheese here on the cover. We've got soups, stews, side dishes, desserts, and of course, cocktails because I love a good cocktail. So thank you guys so much for being here at the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books this year. And I'm gonna share some information on where you can purchase the Secret Ingredient Cookbook at the end of the demo here. But I think we should get going because I'm all about a good family-friendly meal. I am a mom of three boys under age five. So I am basically running a restaurant in my house between my husband, myself, and my three boys and cooking for work and projects and everything else. I am cooking 24-7, 365 days a year. So I wanted to come up with a fun spin on penne arrabbiata, which is a traditionally spicy Italian sauce. It's tomato-based, but you may spot somewhere around here, the secret ingredient in my sweet and spicy penne arrabbiata is none other than strawberries. I know it sounds crazy, but that's kind of the premise of every single recipe in this book. This is what I always say to people. It sounds crazy, but just trust me on this one. The combination of tomatoes and strawberries is such an unlikely duo, but it comes together in the perfect marriage. You get this jammy consistency and texture. It cooks down over a good 30 to 45 minutes. I made one earlier today, and you get that natural pectin and sweetness from the fruit paired with the tangy acidity of the tomatoes. We've got some tomato paste, of course, some garlic and onions, olive oil, crushed pepper for a little bit of heat, and it's all come, come together perfectly. So let's get started first things first. I made a batch of penne pasta ahead of time here. The great thing about this sauce is it's totally freezer friendly. So you can make a batch or even a double batch, let it cool completely, and then just stash any leftovers in your freezer. And then you can um, unfreeze any whenever you want a quick homemade sauce. To, so to my large stock pot here, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. And then of course, the good foundation of any traditional tomato sauce, garlic and onions. These are our aromatics. This is where the flavor really comes in. So I'm gonna add my diced onion and a little bit of minced garlic. Everybody's going into the pot and then I am gonna crank up the heat here and give these onions and garlic a chance to really sweat, hang out, kind of caramelize and do their thing. Give these a good stir here. Now the important thing anytime you're sauteing onions and garlic is you wanna keep an eye on them and make sure that you have enough fat in the pan. In this case, we're using olive oil because it helps to get that nice golden brown color. 
and make sure that they don't burn. And I've got that nice sizzle and smell. So you're just gonna let these do their thing for a minute or two while we talk about our other ingredients. So next up, I'm gonna add the stars of the show, our crushed tomatoes here, as well as our diced strawberries. So in the summer months, berries are at their peak, they're juicy, they're sweet, and most importantly, they are gonna what leads to this unbelievably jammy consistency, which for me, when it comes to tomato sauces, I love a good thick sauce. I don't want any runny sauces. And what's really cool about this recipe too, is if you wanted to add Italian sausage or ground beef or ground pork, any combination, you could easily turn it into a bolognese using these same basic flavors. So my onions and garlic are sweating. They're doing their thing here. I'm gonna add to this my crushed tomatoes, now these are just store-bought canned crushed tomatoes. If you wanted to use fresh tomatoes and dice them up, that works just as well. But you wanna make sure that you poach them in some boiling water so you soften them slightly, kind of bring out their natural sweetness. And of course, hang on to any of those juices because that's what's gonna reduce down. It's gonna form a really great basis for the flavor of our sauce. They're, those are going into the pot as well. And then, of course, the strawberries. So I mentioned earlier, this is a bit of a crazy combination, just like every recipe in the secret ingredient cookbook. A lot of people ask me, how did you actually get to this conclusion that these two things were gonna work well together? A lot of trial and error. So I'm a huge fan of cooking with fruit. I make tons of salad dressings using jams as the base and even marinades as well and sauces. So I actually do a tangy baked chicken wing recipe, which is also in my book. And the secret ingredient in that is blackberry jam. So you get this sweetness mixed with hoisin sauce. So I'm a really big fan of always balancing the sweet with the savory. And that's exactly what we are doing here today. The tomatoes are in, I'm gonna give them a little stir here. And then we're gonna add equal parts diced strawberries. So the great thing about this recipe is you could also use frozen strawberries if you had a bag in your freezer. You just wanna make sure that you thaw them first so that they cook nice and evenly with the sauce. So this is all coming together, fantastic. In go our diced strawberries. And I mentioned these have so much natural pectin in them. And the pectin in fruit, it's like when you make jam, you traditionally add a ton of sugar and it helps kind of caramelize and thicken the mixture. But we're gonna use those same properties that traditionally make jam to make a delicious tomato sauce. But look at how gorgeous this is. The bright red color of the tomatoes with the strawberries. I'm gonna hold this up to camera because I want you guys to get a nice close look at this. It's not too hot yet. Look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, traditionally tomato sauces are a vibrant red, but this kind of takes it to a whole new level. So back on the heat we go. And then we're also gonna add a few more ingredients to this to really amp up the flavor. Arabiata is a very bold sauce. It's spicy, it's a little fiery. So we need a little bit of heat. That comes in the form of our crushed red pepper flakes. So you could saute these with the onions and the garlic, or you could just add them in at the end. And I mentioned that I have three little boys and they are under age five. So they don't do anything spicy, um, which is what's also great about this recipe. It tends to be a little bit on the sweeter side because of those strawberries. So if you wanted to keep it super kid friendly, you could absolutely just leave out the crushed red pepper flakes or just kind of serve them on the side and then people can sprinkle on their pasta to taste kind of at the end if they want a little bit of heat. But I love the combination of the fieriness of the crushed red pepper with the sweetness of the strawberries. You get the tangy acidity of the tomatoes. Everybody is working together in unison here to make this delicious arabiata sauce. And then of course, a few other ingredients here. We're gonna use some tomato paste. So I find tomato paste to be one of the most underrated ingredients because I think a lot of people just don't traditionally know how to cook with it. It's really important when you cook with tomato paste that you give it a chance to caramelize. Tomato paste is just as simply as the name states, it's a very condensed paste version of tomatoes. So think of it like a, a powerhouse of tomato flavor. But the problem is if you just stir it into a sauce and you don't let it simmer for a good amount of time, that flavor is not gonna really continue to develop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it to our sauce here, crank up our heat, and then we're gonna actually let this mixture do its thing over low heat simmering for 30 to 40 minutes. So it's got a decent amount of simmer time here, but it's that amount of time that's really gonna break down all of these ingredients. It's gonna get that tomato paste nice and caramelized so it releases all of that delicious tomato flavor. 
I mean, the onions are doing their job in there, the garlic, I'm putting everybody to work in this pot. And then of course, a little bit of dried oregano. It's also used just traditional Italian seasoning as well. If you wanted to take it extra and using kind of the summer produce that's currently at its peak, you could also shred some fresh basil and stir that in at the end. But I'm just gonna add a little bit of my oregano. And of course, we're gonna season with some kosher salt as well. The great thing about any time you're making a sauce that simmers for a significant amount of time is you wanna salt it at the beginning, just like you wanna salt the pasta water, which we're gonna talk about in a second, but you also wanna be tasting and seasoning at the end because all of these flavors are gonna really develop, especially when you have a 30 to 45 minute cook time like this has. So you wanna make sure you season once at the beginning, which kind of encourages all the flavors to come out. Then you wanna let all of those ingredients really do their thing and then taste and season again at the very end when you have total control over the salt. And keep in mind too, if you're a Parmesan cheese fan, because I like, I like a little pasta with my Parmesan, if you know what I'm saying, Parmesan is so inherently salty. So basically you're just sprinkling a little bit of salt on top anyways. So keep that in mind when you are salting your pasta sauce, you don't wanna overdo it. It's much easier to add salt than it is to take away. So this texture is looking fantastic. And I'm just gonna give this a quick stir. And I made one earlier here. I wanna show you guys. This is the texture that it's gonna start at. And then as these ingredients all cook down, you have two options. You can either just let them kind of get into this chunky, jammy consistency that I talked about. Some of those tomatoes will stay whole so you get kind of bigger, plumper tomato pieces in your sauce. Or this is one I made earlier and I actually pureed it. So now I have a nice, very pureed, great consistency sauce. And the whole reason I pureed this is because my kids, not a huge fan of the chunks. So I love a good chunk of tomato or strawberry in there. The kids aren't gonna go for it. So of course we want them eating whatever I am making. <laughs> so I gave this a nice quick blend in my blender. You could also use a handheld immersion blender straight into the pot here. Keep it simple at all times. The less number of dishes we have to do, the better. And then I just made some penne arrabbiata here. So of course using penne noodles. I boiled these in boiling salted water. When you're salting your water, you want it to be nice and salty like the sea. So if you taste it, you should instantly get hit with that kind of salty taste in your mouth because that's gonna be your one and only chance to season your pasta. Whether you're using fresh pasta or dried pasta in this case, cook it till al dente, which means it just has a little bit of bite left to it. We don't want overcooked mushy pasta and then drain it and get it into a bowl just like I have here. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of my pureed arrabbiata sauce and scoop this on top is looking so good and the great thing about this recipe too as i mentioned you could absolutely do this with ground turkey ground beef um, you could also do italian sausage or if you wanted to do a protein on the side i love doing arrabbiata with just some garlicky shrimp something quick you can do on the grill you could also serve this with a side of salmon you could do any sort of seafood scallops clams anything works with this recipe because it's just, just such a great balance of flavors um, that it works great across the board chicken shrimp fish you name it, it works. So now we've got to top off with a little Parmesan cheese, of course, and a bit of salt. I like freshly grated Parmesan cheese, but you could also use shredded, get it right on top there. And of course, we have to dig in now. I'm gonna give this a good stir. It's hot, it's so sweet, it's spicy. It hits all those flavor notes. Mm-hmm. What I love is you get that instantaneous burst of sweetness, but it's not like a traditional cloying sweetness of adding just sugar or brown sugar to the pot, which is what most pasta sauces have as a sweet addition. We're getting that fruity sweetness, which is so different than just street sugar going into that pot. I get a little bit of the strawberries, the acidity from the tomatoes. I can tell that that tomato paste has been caramelized. I mean, this is a flavor powerhouse and as i mentioned earlier too it freezes like a breeze so any extras you can pour into airtight containers let it cool completely and then you can pop it in your freezer and have sweet and spicy penne arrabbiata from the secret ingredient cookbook whenever you want it so i'm kelly senye thank you so much for joining me today at the san diego union tribune festival of books this recipe came straight from the secret ingredient cookbook which is my brand new cookbook and you can purchase my book at any of our indie booksellers nationwide, all of our partners there. There's a link down below where you can grab a copy. Thanks so much for tuning in.
Thank you.